On MTD CNC, we commonly get requests and engineers asking us about tool bending. I've travelled to the West Midlands today to one of our customers, IVTS, where we're going to learn a lot more about this product. So Simon, we're going to look at two models of machines here. The first is the Even Touch. Tell us about this one. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, this is our entry-level to mid-range machine. Um, we've changed the machine now so it's completely PC interfaced uh, with the touch screen. And as you can see, we can brand the machine um, physically, but also through the software. Okay, and what's the audience for this type of machine? Um, it's either a, a smaller engineering company or it can be a large company where they can't justify the expense of uh, some of the systems that are on the market. So, I'm a small subcontractor. This machine's going to cost me, what, £5,500, I think you mentioned earlier. What's the justification for that? So, the benefit for, for that investment is going to be control of your product. It's also going to be control of uh, the purchase orders as well. So you won't need to make a manual purchase order to your supplier. The system will do all that for you. But more importantly, you can see exactly who and what job is used, what, what product. And there's a distinct difference between investing in a machine through IVTS as to some other suppliers in the fact that you actually buy this machine. You don't give these machines out, you buy this machine, which enables you to fill it with whatever product you like. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. You're not led by any manufacturer or supplier. Uh, what it gives you the benefit of is controlling your own product and managing the suppliers that you have. There's no need for integration, the software creates that for you. And what about ease of use? Again, one of the things that you would think of is, okay, I can buy the machine, but how easy is it going to be to integrate into my shop floor? Yeah, so what we've focused on with the software is, from the interface side, it needs to be nice and easy to use, but we've also got a nice software at the back end uh, that will enable you to make any uh, changes to product in the machine, employees, reorder levels, and so on. We're pretty focused and it needs to be a really simple software um, so that people can use exactly what they want. And from my experience of a small machine shop, you tend to find the owner or the director is the one in charge of ordering all the consumables and the products. I suppose with a, with a system like this, that eliminates that. Yeah, certainly. And you know, the, the owner is generally the most expensive person on site. Um, so what we can do is get the machine to make that automatic report and just save that cost straight away. And how many sort of tool vent pockets can you have on this particular, on, on the event? So on this machine, you've got maximum of 70. But once we've put the touch screen on here, we can then um, duplicate machines on the side of it as slaves. So from the one touch screen, we can operate uh, you know, a number of machines. Um, all we have to do is just make sure we don't create a queuing point. Okay, so in addition to the cost savings and, and the reorder, is the reordering of stock automated as well? That's correct, yeah. So we run on a min-max level. Uh, and when you've got your reorder points, the machine will automatically send uh, a report through to create what's needed to, re to replenish the machine. We also support order quantity so that we're not ordering um, part packs of carbide inserts, for instance. We would only order tens or fives or whatever, whatever quantity of those parts are ordered in. And, and would it be right to say that if you had a, a specific job or a specific drawing number and you made that component, you would be able to go back and see the costs associated with that component that you've used from the tool from the tool bend machine? Yeah, certainly. We can, we can track against a number of different data levels. So we could have a work, works order number or we could have part number as well. So that way then we can track against a part number uh, that's, that's continuously running or batch by batch for, um, uh, for, for different uh, quantities. So if I was the owner of a company, firstly, it would save me having to do any reordering. Secondly, I would be able to look at the data and potentially be able to analyse what a part is costing me to make through this machine. Correct. Okay, so that would save me those two factors. Entirely, yeah. And more. And the cost we've spoke about already, five and a half thousand, that's installed into your machine shop? That's correct, yes. Training? Uh, we offer training as an additional uh, cost. Uh, so we charge £285 a day for the, um, for the training. Um, and there's a, a subscription to the software as well online. Uh, that's £20 a month. OK, and I would imagine that once you do have a system like this in place or a tool bear machine like this in place, you do become quite reliant on it um, with the savings that it's going to make for you. What happens if it breaks down or do you have engineers that can come out and quickly respond? Yeah, we're one of the few that have our own engineers. And we've done that just so we can make a quick response. And we offer uh, either sales, sorry, either uh, service, 
contracts or we offer um, ad hoc service as well so you can just pay as you need it and um, we don't force anybody into a contract however if that's what you want then we can support that also so Simon let's see the machine in action can you um, do a cycle for us yes yeah, certainly so um, as we said earlier the machine's completely touchscreen controlled uh, which gives us benefits on, on how we collect the data um, because of it being a, a, a Windows 7 PC we can use USB interfaces so we can use mag swipe uh, barcode, proximity, um, fingerprint recognition, um, or we can just simply type in our, our user ID and a PIN number for security. The machine then knows that I've logged into the system. We can search against the product, and if I just put part of a keyword in and say OK, it will list any item that's got that uh, string in there. And when I select the product and say OK, the machine will then issue the product. So Simon, if I had a product that was too big for one of the, for the Helix in this machine, what would I do? OK, so what we've got here is the machine that's slaved on the side of the master machine. Uh, this machine is designed for oversized products. So what it enables us to do is put products such as the latex gloves, ear defenders, the dust masks, we can configure the machine up to 10 products wide, or we could even have the whole shelf just running one product out of there. So it's a really flexible machine on, on how it operates. It actually runs these little conveyor belts rather than the spirals, so we're not limited by the width of the product. Um, and we've also got the elevation on there so that we're not dropping product from the top shelf. So delicate product as well as bulky product is ideal for this machine. So can we see this in action? Certainly, it's still run off the same touch screen, so it's running off my credentials still. I can search for the gloves, for instance, or use the keyword search. And then when I say OK on the screen, the machine will go and fetch it. What it actually does is vends the product until it sees it drop into the bin. So we confirm that the product's in there, and then it allows the product to be issued from the bin. So in essence, what we're doing with running the slave alongside the master is we're, we're catering, trying to cater for as, as many products as we can in the vending system. Certainly. There's also a cost advantage because once we've got the touchscreen in there as the master, the, the slave machines are, are slightly less. So how many slaves can you have off of the one master? Um, realistically, up to probably 30, I think 32 is the maximum. Um, the problem you get is when you get over four or maybe five, then it the, becomes a queuing point. You get so much traffic through one screen. That's what we need to try and avoid. What about the weight limit for the slave? Okay, so the, uh, the actual weight limit per shelf is 30 kilos, um, but again, because it's generally bulky item, weight doesn't tend to be an issue. So with the Even Touch, we've got the master and we've got the slave, what can you have in addition? Okay, so in addition we can offer lockers uh, to automate uh, dispense of even larger product. Um, we can put a draw system that we, that's provided by Lister, uh, with part control or draw control uh, and we can also put a caged area on the side of the machine as well with an electronic door for, for large items such as oil absorbent, um, you know, those sort of products, fixtures even uh, and other ranges of tooling. So it's pretty, it's pretty flexible in what we can add to the side of the machine. So I consider the tool then to be one of the most undersold products in the UK and in machine shops. Um, and I think the message I'm trying to get across here to engineers that are going to be watching this video, the ones that don't have it, that what they're missing out on. So talk me through the, the benefits once again and the cost of this is going to be to them. Okay, so the cost is around five and a half thousand. That's going to cost you around £165 a month for a lease. Three boxes of inserts, that's really going to cover that initial uh, cost. From that point forward, you're going to be making cost savings. Um, when you look at the data that's stored in the, in the system, there's so much that you can take from that data. And if it's your own system, you can build it into your business system and ensure that everything is, is running to how you want it. So a vital part of the solution is obviously the software. Can you talk me through how it works? Yes, yeah, certainly. So we've tried to keep the software as, as clean and as easy to use as possible and automated. Um, what we have is a, is a hierarchy within the software so that a distributor can view a number of machines. Um, a local area sales guy could view just his related machines. 
and the customer can have a, a, a username just to view their own machine. So we can put different levels in place, even within companies, um, we can have users that can only view the machine that they're responsible for. So the way that we do that is to log into the software and with the password. So when we log into the software, the first thing we do is send you to the reports page. And the reason is because that's generally what people want to do as a first task. So what I can do here is I can choose a date range if I just want to run an ad hoc report. I can choose a machine that's filtered and when I press update, that's going to return back for the date range any transactions that have taken place. So if, anything that I've used or anything that I've purchased? Okay, so that's anything that's been issued from the machine, issue transactions. So you can see we have it in pack quantity with the unit price, with the total price, and there's also a column here for, for job number as well. The headers are alive, so if I choose one of the headers, it will regroup the, the results um, opposing to that header. And what we've also done here is we've put a summary button on. So if I hit summary, what we do is summarize that view into product location and group the total users as well. So it makes it a more concise report. So you could, so, so you could look at, the software would be able to tell you what you're using a lot of, what you're using too much of. You could, could you compare month to month how much usage you've got? Yes, you can, yeah. And what you can do with this data is as soon as you know, uh, or as soon as you've exported the date range that you want, you can hit export to CSV and it'll pull it straight into Excel for you. So if you want to do any more um, detailed analysis of that data, we can push it straight into Excel and you've got all the, all the tools of Excel to use as well. So the customer who, who owns the machine has access to be able to see what he's using and the quantities of what he's using and, and over a period of time. Equally, a distributor then has his login where he can go in to see whether he needs to refill. That's correct. Machine. Yeah, so we run min-max levels on the system. Um, so the machine can automatically, or the system can automatically run uh, uh, a reorder report against each machine, against each supplier. So if you had, if you were a customer and you had a machine and you had three distributors that you were using to fill that machine, you'd be able to basically say distributor one, there's an order for this, distributor two, distributor three and so forth. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. When we look at managing the machine and we choose the machine, we can change these custom fields here to be able to um, update the report headers. So if I save this and then I go into locations and choose the location again, this has now been updated in the custom field area. We've also then got the area for the employees and we've got the area to manage the stock within the machine. So I'm a precision engineer. I'm very tempted in the event solution. I'm close to placing an order. I'm just interested in the return on my investment. I need to know how quickly I'm going to get payback. Do you have any tools that you can use to show me that? Yeah, certainly. Uh, we've got a return on investment uh, calculator um, that we can either use to uh, substantiate our case to the to the owner, um, or if it's a, if it's a larger company, we can we can share this with the engineer trying to push the system into a site to support against his managers. Um, in its simplest form. What we're looking at is a, an annual usage, and we stay anywhere between 20 and 40% cost reduction on usage um, is, is where we're gonna be looking at, dependent on where the current um, situation is with control. So there's a saving, so, so product usage, so just on product usage alone, you can save 20%. Entirely. So if we look at a turnover or a usage annually of 60,000, which would be 5,000 a month, and 20%, that's going to offer 12,000 per year saving. And if we go through not taking in anything into account, such as um, increased use of uh, regrinds, um, stock out reduction with sound day deliveries, walk time, even if we just take into account the potential cost saving, we're going to be looking at a payback there within six months. Therefore, I'm convinced. <laughs> Thank you.